Hiya! Welcome back to the second channel video guys, my name is Nar Wilson, we're in, weirdly in my bedroom tonight. That's because this first half of the video is going to be uh, story time with Niall and one of the main reasons for this is because of this. Um, we mind-blowingly sold out over Christmas. Um, we ordered a batch, sold out very quick, so it was like shit, we'll order another one and sold out of them. So I just want to say a massive thank you for everyone who bought a book. And the reason I'm here, and we're sort of the reason we're telling this story to intro the vlog, is because we've ordered another batch. I know, how good is that? <laughs> this first page will be signed by me. Did miss four in the first however many thousand we did. Um, I've sent them videos and apologise, it's fine. But listen, top link in description. I'd really appreciate it. It's honestly a proud moment. It's my story, my autobiography, of my, um, my crazy life so far. So, yeah. Okay, the story. Now, it's in there in very much detail. I've also made a documentary. I've also been actively outspoken around my own mental health troubles and battles over the years and addiction behaviours and all, how all that all links into sport and why, what happened to me. And the reason that I'm sort of here telling this story again today is just so that I can help people. If you connect with my words and particularly if you're an athlete, connect with my words, please get in touch. It's a bit of a crazy bubble that we live in and, it, and everyone is, everyone's got their own story. That's what I'm coming to realise anyway. Right, I was an insane gymnast. <laughs> I was a high level athlete and through my teens, I dedicated my whole entire life to sport. And I realized very quickly into my adult years and, and understanding psychology, I was very, very, very obsessive, addictive, all or nothing with absolutely everything. Um, example, when I was a baby, I used to watch the same film over and over and over for like a year. Same film every night. I don't know if you did that, comment below if you did do that. Come to realise it's the reason that I was so good at gymnastics in the past and probably the reasons I've done the things that I've done today because I abs I just apply my absolute everything into one thing because I want it and then, you know, more often not achieve it. Now, as I'm getting through my teenage years, I've realised my intensity and obsessive, obsessive behaviour translated across and it would be the same in food, eating my eating habits. That had just become an adult, it'd be the same with drinking alcohol, it'd be the same with having sex, it'd be the same with gaming, it'd be the same with watching a series, like... I wanted... I think it was just I applied it to everything. Not necessarily I wanted to be the best at those things, but like that... You know, I was a competitor as well, I was a performer, I'd just, I'd just be all in. Sometimes it was fine, sometimes it wasn't. And my absolute Achilles heel with all of this, which is the story I'm going to briefly tell at the start of this video, was gambling. Fucked me. <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm going to tell this story and when I'm talking about these addictive behaviours, I absolutely don't want to glamorise them. Um, and I think what happened to me is when, when things weren't at their best in my life, in my training, I'd be injured in my personal life. I would sort of use these avenues, and particularly gambling a lot more than the others, as like an escapism from my reality. That's what it felt like. The, my life was so crazy and intense, and then things it particularly started to happen when things started to blow up on here, on YouTube and business, and all of a sudden I had a lot of money, and I felt like a pressure cooker. And, I was like, and then eventually I'd just go, bang, and that would be me nipping off to the casino and uncontrollably playing roulette. Very, very quickly taking you back I went to the casino the first time when I was 18 years old and I won, at the time was a lot of money, I won like 250 pounds playing, playing roulette. That was the very, very start of the journey and obviously at 18, having partied all night for my birthday and gone to the casino for the first time, it was the freaking best night of my life and I wanted to do it again. But like I say, I think it was like that, it was like a roller coaster of a journey from when I was 18, 19, then got a lot of help with it, uh, with psychologists, then stopped for a couple of years and then picked it back up again, again when I was sort of 22, 23. And it just got silly. It felt like it gripped me by the throat. And I think, and what I believe is, when it sort of becomes a problem is when you, you lose control, you're doing, I was gambling when I didn't want to gamble and also connected it with pain. So I was gambling because I was depressed. I was gambling because I was anxious. I was gambling because I'd have a fallout. You know, it was it was an escapism from something that weren't that I didn't want to deal with. I didn't want to deal with reality in my life. Uh, and essentially, that can be absolutely anything. It can be the it can be alcohol. It can be food. I think gambling is a silent killer for athletes in particular because there's no like negative physiological effects. There's no hangover. I could effectively successfully be a professional athlete and a gambler because I could still, I could go to the casino from 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. for four hours. I could still get me 10 hours kip. I could still eat me, you know, the diet that I needed to eat. I could still get in the ice bath when I got back. I could still recover. 
you know i wasn't partying drinking all night and then not been at train for three days and i think i genuinely think that's the reason why it's a bit of a, a bit of a silent killer amongst us, us athletes eventually got to the point where it wasn't just i was having fun it was it completely controlled my head and my life and i also wasn't just betting 50 quid i was betting two and a half thousand i was betting five thousand you know at one point i had a huge fucking i think it was like twelve thousand pounds of cash in my bedroom that i'd won from playing roulette but never took it back so that sounds like a lot of money but every time i went back i paid on card and it was just a bit of a mess and i, I was lying to everyone um, they didn't know I was going four times a week. I got to a real, real tough, low stage of my life and I just felt so guilty and so ashamed of myself for, for what I was doing and like I was meant to be this inspirational guy and like I, was, I felt dirty. It's just I knew I, I wasn't, it wasn't aligned with what I wanted to do but I couldn't help it and I couldn't control it. And eventually I, I sort of, I knew that I, I couldn't continue like this and put my hand up and said, I need some help here, please, please can you help. Unfortunately, I have amazing people around me in my life that allowed me to get out of, of those bad habits and behaviours and, and completely stop. And I put some safety measures in place. I actually, it's weird to tell everyone this, by the way. Um, I know I've done it before, but each time it gets, it, all the, the same emotions come back and I feel so out, like sort of nervous telling, like burying my soul out here on the internet. I'm currently, Banned from every casino in the UK, and the same with online betting. Um, maybe have the odd football bet and, and play around on on my friend's phone, but it's sort of it's very controlled. So I I just I just wanted to tell that story to maybe see as to how things can lose control and 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 can get to that that level where it's it's an issue. And I, I think the key things are if if you feel like you need to escape your reality and that's linked to pain, like I try to explain. I don't know whether I did very well, but you know with whatever it may be for you that, that's your vice, that's the, that helps you run, that feels like you're running away or allows you to run away from what's going on. Or, or it is when you know you've got something not quite right is, um, do you want to be doing it? And if the answer's no, but you still do it anyway and you don't feel like you can control yourself doing it, then that's, you know, should I be doing this? No, am I doing it? Yeah. It takes a lot to be brave enough, like, and I'm so glad that I did to ask for help. And I think if anyone's watching this particularly, um, professional athletes, athletes that feel like everything that I've just explained, I'm explaining you what you're like. Just drop me a message. I'll be brave enough to seek some advice and psychological advice for the people around you if you've got the support. If you don't have the support, just just talk. I was heading to bankruptcy very quick and it'll have happened very, very quickly if I didn't put my hands up and ask for help, I swear to God. Um, which is obviously not what you want at, at, in your early 20s, but I just hated the fact that it fucking ruined my life, man. And all I thought about was doing that, and then when I was doing it, all I thought about was how much I hated myself. <laughs> it's not funny, and I, and I know that's what you feel if, if, it, if it is you in that situation, but please ask for help, man. And hope these words could, you can connect. I think from this point, I do want to make the video um, light-hearted and put a smile on your face. So for the next three or four minutes, we'll uh, we'll see what we've been up to over these last couple of weeks. But thank you so much for all your support. I do want to say one more time, the whole raw truth and that story in particular, but loads and loads of other stuff in my life that I've battled with and all the goods as well, all the ups, it's in the book. Please get it. Top link in the description. Uh, we've got very limited copies again. And if the way that it, you know if it goes the way it was going before Christmas, then you'll miss out. All right, guys, love you. Whoa, are they signing up somewhere? Yeah. No, I've never been in one in my life. I've never been to somebody, so either. I can't tell you what to expect. Take your clothes off, open it up, and then click start. Okay. When you get in, you've got 60 sec 53 seconds to get unchanged and get in. So then I just, then I just stand there? You stand there, click start, and then I'll go I'll on. Take my socks off. Everything apart from boxes, I'll leave my boxes on. Oh, wait, here it is. You hear that come out looking like stone if you do go to the Yeah, look. You come out like Ross Geller on Friends, but he doesn't fit his This is the first time I'm in the sunbed and I just thought, you know what? I need a bit of bit colour. Vitamin D. Vitamin, vitamin D. So nice. I shut this, press start. Right. It's like Captain America, bro. You're gonna close it and come out like. Yeah! See <laughs> the other bitch, Dave. <laughs>
I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> well, that'll be the first and last time I get in a sunbed. You never know, you might wake up tomorrow as brown as a chicken. Oh, yeah, well, did it take a little bit to develop? Like, a little bit I, of time? I think so, yeah. I don't think it's instant. Oh, mate, I could be wrong, though. In about an hour, I'm going to be a fucking bait troop, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs>